Sean. You expect me to believe you're going to change all that? I don't see that happening. The pain is excruciating. The way I'm going right now. This is life and death for me. I'm not seeing you go all of your life. What happened when you lose weight? I'm about to blow up. What is the purpose of that, child? Can I answer the question? Hearing Dr. Now approve me for his weight loss surgery is exciting. It always feels good to hear positive feedback. If you think you've seen it all on this show, you're in for a surprise. Charles's story is a whirlwind of drama, setbacks, and some jaw-dropping moments. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. But before we dive into the wild journey of Charles Bridgman, the heaviest man on my 600 pounds life, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for your front row seat to all the drama, successes, and jaw-dropping moments. Grab your snacks, maybe something healthier than Charles's old breakfast, and let's dive into this incredible transformation. It's scary waking up because everything gets a little harder each morning. My body feels like a prison. I feel like I'm trapped, like I can get up and out of bed, but I get short of breath walking to the bathroom from my bed. I'll start losing my breath on a bad day. As soon as I get up, you'll, you'll hear my knees like, It'll continuously like pop, 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 pop. The pain is usually excruciating. Any normal person should not be short of breath. Charles's eating habits were nothing short of legendary. Breakfast? Try five eggs with cheese, biscuits, and seven sausages. Yes, seven. Lunch and dinner followed the same script. Massive portions of fast food, junk food, and enough sugar to put Willy Wonka to shame. If food were a person, they'd be Charles's soulmate. What are we gonna have for breakfast? Um, five eggs uh, scrambled with cheese. Okay. How many uh, sausages? Seven. Okay. All right. Okay, I'm gonna get it ready for you. I live here for free with my sister and brother, but I can't do anything for myself anymore. I have to have someone eat all my meals. Living with his brother Brad and sister Chiana, Charles couldn't even prepare his own meals. Brad became his full-time caretaker, which sounds noble until you realize it also meant Brad was enabling Charles's destructive habits. Imagine being so dependent that you can't even make a sandwich. It's like living in a prison where the warden is your appetite. I recently started being his caregiver, and I help him, especially when Elena's not here. He doesn't have me like wash his back or anything like Elena does. It gets challenging sometimes. He can't make food for himself. He can't go get water or nothing. He, he, he strictly relies on being able to call and have that person there to help. Like my brother is the only person who ever like stood up for me and told me I'm doing good in life. He's always made sure to tell me he's proud of me and that I'm doing a good job. So I kind of took it into my own hands to help my brother as much as I could. Charles's family dynamics were a roller coaster. Brad and Chiana did their best to help, but they also enabled him. It's a tough line to walk. How do you support someone without feeding their addiction? Brad took care of Charles, but it was a double-edged sword. Helping someone who's sinking while you're holding a Big Mac? Yeah, that's a recipe for disaster. I come from a big family. Not like the Brady Bunch, you'd say. <laughs> but my mom was a drug addict. She was still a good mom. She still took care of her kids first, and then after that, she did whatever she did. My mom, when I was younger, was scared that my dad's grandparents were gonna take me away. We left and drove from Washington to this little chill park in Apple Valley, California, without telling my dad. Charles Bridgman's weight battle began early and spiraled out of control faster than you can say extra fries. Food was his comfort, his go-to for every emotion. But wait, there's more. Before food took over, Charles spent a decade addicted to meth. Yep, you heard that right. From one addiction to another, this guy really knew how to pick his poisons. It's just family events. I'm a real big family person. My brother, he's always been a bigger guy, but he's always had my back. He's definitely the glue to this family. He taught me how to ride a bike. He taught me how to swim, you know? He's always been there for me. And right now, he doesn't have anyone to go hang out with or talk to or anything like that. So I'm not just his brother. I'm also his best friend. His 
meth addiction was so severe that his mom and grandma kicked him out, leaving him homeless and, not surprisingly, in trouble with the law. After several run-ins, he finally went to rehab. He got clean, but he just swapped one addiction for another. Instead of meth, it was mountains of food. Imagine trading a meth pipe for a cheeseburger. Not exactly a fair trade, right? That's when drugs came into my life. It just got out of control from there. I guess my mom felt guilty that I was on my way to winding up like her. Her way of handling that was just to throw me out in the street. So I moved in with my grandparents full time. I would chase any high I can get. Somehow I still managed to finish high school and graduate. But not long after that, my grandma found out I was using. She kicked me out. After that, I became homeless. Desperation led Charles to Dr. Now Zaradan. If you're not familiar, Dr. Now is a weight loss wizard with the bedside manner of a boot camp instructor. When Charles made the trip to Houston, he hoped for a miracle, or at least a swift kick in the pants. Imagine walking into a lion's den with nothing but a smile and a heap of desperation. So the big question is, how you got to this point? I moved to Washington to get um, off of drugs. And when I had quit drugs and went to rehab, uh, a lot of weight came back to me and it just kept getting worse. And my mom recently passed away. I'm sorry to hear that about your mom. How long were you doing meth? I think a little over 10 years. How long have you been off of that? About four. So you put your body through a lot over the years. Yeah. Charles's first meeting with Dr. Now was a reality check. Dr. Now didn't mince words. He told Charles straight up that his weight was a ticking time bomb. Dr. Now doesn't sugarcoat things. Ironic, considering sugar was Charles's worst enemy. The cold, hard facts lose weight or face severe health consequences. It's like getting hit by a truck, only the truck is full of truth. You know, weight is 100 pounds, yet you're hot. So you have 500 to 550 pounds to lose. And it's important you start to move toward that now, especially if you're losing your mobility. Are you able to walk? A little bit. Okay, who else in this household besides you? Uh, it would be my brother, who's my, who is actually paid to be my caretaker, and my sister and her boyfriend. Dr. Now gave Charles a diet plan that looked more suitable for a cat, 1,200 calories a day. No more junk food, no more soda, no more late night binges. Drastic measures for drastic times. He also recommended physical activity, which for someone Charles's size was like asking him to climb Everest. Yeah, that you're gonna need uh, to change your eating habits, so I'm gonna send you some 1,200 calories, high protein, no carb diet. And also I'm gonna email you some exercises that I want you to start doing. So you think you can uh, follow the diet I'm gonna give you? I wanna say I know I can. All right, Charles, we're going to set up for you to go to a local clinic. Whoa, can you believe Charles's journey so far? If you're hooked like we are, smash that like button and drop a comment below with your thoughts. What would you have done in his shoes? And hey, share this video with your friends. Everyone needs a little motivation, right? Let's keep the momentum going. Charles's first attempt at following Dr. Now's advice was rough. Old habits die hard, and for Charles, they were practically immortal. He struggled with the diet, often slipping back into his comfort food routines. His first follow-up visit showed minimal progress. Dr. Now was not impressed. Imagine disappointing your sternest teacher, but instead of detention, your health is on the line. It's like getting a bad report card and not being able to hide it from your parents. So do we still have that shake weight? I do not think we have the shake weight team. Okay, um, can you bring me a bag? A bag of five cans, what are you gonna do with that? I'm gonna make a weight. Yeah, make a right. I got you. Dr. Now sent me this packet and book with instructions what to do. Since then, I've been making the changes, and Bradley's been helping me. Okay, I'm going to put the cans in the bag. The second visit was a turning point. Charles realized the gravity of his situation and started taking the program seriously. He managed to shed some pounds, and Dr. Now saw a glimmer of hope.
He acknowledged the progress, but reminded Charles this was just the beginning. It's like climbing a mountain and realizing you've only reached the first base camp. Still a long way to go, but at least he wasn't stuck at the bottom. My in-person appointment at the clinic in this area that doctor now found was a few weeks ago, but I couldn't go because there wasn't anybody in my family to take me that day, and my car's still broken down. As soon as I have it back, I'll reach out to Dr. Now, and then we can schedule a time for my first weigh-in. But while I'm waiting, my goal is to just keep to the plan and keep losing weight, then go to Houston and get the surgery. Call me if you need anything. All right. By the third visit, Charles had made significant strides. He lost enough weight to qualify for surgery. Dr. Now was cautiously optimistic. He scheduled him for gastric bypass surgery, but not without a stern warning. This surgery is a tool, not a magic fix. You can give someone a hammer, but it doesn't mean they can build a house. It's like giving someone a map to buried treasure, but not mentioning the booby traps. No, I do feel better now, Dr. Now. I, I've just been eating salads at night now for dinner. I stopped eating all my other stuff. Okay, that's good. I'm proud of your progress. So I'm gonna give you two months to move down to Houston. And in this two months, I want you to lose 40 pounds. 40 pounds? Then you're gonna be able to have your weight loss surgery a month after that, okay? All right, I think I can do this. Is your month gonna be good for you to move down here? I don't know, I have to check with my family and stuff. And here's the plot twist. Charles declined the surgery. After all that hard work, he decided he didn't want to move to Houston and leave his family, even if it was temporary. He wanted to continue his weight loss efforts at home in Everett. It's like training for a marathon and then deciding to take a nap on race day. Viewers were furious calling his episode a waste of time. But hey, it's his life, his choice. I don't, I don't blame you. I'll go down there for my recovery, but yeah, I am not moving to Houston. I think my appointment with Dr. Now went pretty well. Hearing Dr. Now approve me for his weight loss surgery is exciting. It always feels good to hear positive feedback. The only thing is Dr. Now also said me and Bradley are supposed to be making plans to move to Houston. Despite turning down the surgery, Charles kept losing weight. By September 2023, he was down to 385 pounds. He shared his progress on social media posting about his walks in the park with his dog. It was clear he was making strides, but the journey wasn't over. In November 2024, he uploaded a photo looking much healthier. He hasn't revealed if he's had surgery since, but his progress is undeniable. You're not even looking forward to it at all, are you? I'm a little worried about the surgery. I'm nervous, not worried, more nervous. But um, I do want the surgery to happen. Yeah. I just don't want to move to Texas. I want to see if the doctor will let me do it in Seattle, maybe. But even if you don't get the surgery, I feel like if you keep to this diet, you'll be skinny without it. I'm very proud of the progress my brother has made so far. He's able to move around better. So it's just a matter of time before he doesn't need me here all the time. Always around, man. That's what I'm here for, Charlie. Charles's story reminds us weight loss isn't just about shedding pounds. It's about losing the emotional baggage that comes with it. So next time you think you can't change, remember Charles. If he can turn his life around from a place of darkness to one of hope, what's stopping you? It's all about taking that first step, no matter how small. Or maybe just not eating the whole cake. What an inspiring story. If Charles's journey has moved you, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you're always up to date with our latest stories. We've got more incredible transformations coming your way. Thanks for watching and remember, every step forward counts, no matter how small. See you next time. I have decided not to move to Houston. It's too far and I'm not gonna leave my family. If I were to move away from my family right now, it'd probably break my heart. Doctor now has just asked for too much. And so there's no point in going to the appointment. I told Dr. Now's office I would talk to him on another video call instead. So I'm going to have that call with him today.